Hello, I'm Audrey Bailey, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. The lake fishing is now underway across Washington. Your Department of Fish and Wildlife stocked hundreds of lakes with trout for opening day, but those fish will be there well into the summer. Our hope is this will provide families with many days of fishing and many good reasons to get together. We load our broodstock onto the truck one way every time. We have a couple guys get in the pond with the clouders that's as wide as the pond and we push those fish down in one end of the, of the raceway, get them all condensed so we can, they're easier to capture. Then we have the boom that comes out over the tank, drops down a braille net. We don't have a scale on that because we hand count each fish onto the trucks because each lake, like this one behind me, gets a certain number of fish that's, that's uh, the, the, the wildlife biologists you know, figure out how many fish to put in the lake. After that, we will hand count into the braille, then we, uh, the boom and the cable is on a hydraulic system, and we lift it up and set it over the tank and drop it into the tank. Uh, and inside that tank, we also have aerators running and oxygen running into the tank at all times. We are standing in the parking lot and boat, boat ramp of Liberty Lake. Um, it's a local lake outside of Spokane, um, east of Spokane, about four miles. And uh, we just stock the lake with 200 broodstock. Broodstock are the fish that we um, spawn every year. In this particular lake, we just put three-year-olds and four-year-old rainbows. And uh, the three-year-olds are the males and four-year-olds are the females that we spawned. Uh, the four-year-old females are ranging between five and eight pounds, and, and the three-year-old males are smaller, of course, they're two, a year younger, but they're ranging about two and a half pounds each. Uh, the reason why we put these fish in this lake and all the other lakes in this area is because we only spawn these rainbows, broodstock, four-year-olds of age, that's it. After that, the egg quality starts decreasing, and uh, and and the fish really kind of get big to, too big to handle. We put these broodstock in this lake mid-April, just before they open on the weekend of April 28th. Um, but these fish will still be available for harvesting clear through summer months into the fall. Um, on top of the broodstock replacement, we also put a whole bunch of rainbow legals from the Ford Trout Hatchery. And so the fishery should be sustainable clear through the summer months. Spokane Hatchery not only plants Liberty Lake, with broodstock and legal rainbow fish. We also stock other lakes down south as far as Rock Lake. We go as far north as Kettle Falls up there in that area and we plant fish in Deep Lake, Cedar Lake, all from the Spokane Hatchery. So we're all over the place. Now, other fishing opportunities across Washington in the coming weeks. The recent Sand Hill Crane Festival at Othello 
is a celebration as the birds pass through on their annual migration. The festival, however, provides the community of Othello with a lot of added bonuses besides playing host to the cranes, and the Department of Fish and Wildlife is glad to be a part of it. Well, we're really happy to be here, the 10th uh, anniversary for the Sandhill Crane Festival, to talk about not only about the Sandhill Cranes, which are a pretty visible part of what's going on in the Othello Moses Lake area, but also the other wildlife and the public lands that are here and how it fits into the community, which is primarily an agricultural community. And it's a lot of the reason why some of these species are doing well. And in some cases, it's why some of these species have some serious challenges. So it's to stay a part of that community, uh, keep that dialogue going, and, and serve the travelers who are coming through to see sandhill cranes and find out about the history, the natural history and the human history of this area. The cranes stop here because of the feed, which is provided by agriculture. So one of the, uh, the uh, goals of the crane festival, besides being a wildlife festival and to attract tourism, is we're we're trying to educate people about the about the positive relationship between uh, the Columbia Basin uh, Irrigation Project and the Columbia National Wildlife Refuge in the irrigated agriculture in the area, and how that uh, provides benefit for wildlife and and uh, recreation opportunities for people. What's interesting to me about the desert and the potholes uh, wildlife area. Um, is the dynamic uh, dynamics of the landscape. It's always changing. We're dealing with several endangered species here. Uh, we have the federally endangered pygmy rabbit and the state endangered leopard frog. Oh, oh the festival has so much to offer. Um, the tours, uh, burrowing owl tours, crane viewing tours, uh, boat trips in the potholes. viewing birds out in the islands. Uh, there's so much to see and do. It's, it's geared toward children. There's children activities here. Um, Wildwise has been here taking children out on to, to see cranes and burrowing owls and things. Um, I think it has a lot to offer. I'm excited. I enjoy leading bus tours. Um, I always have a good time and I think the participants have a good time. With the Cooley Corridor birding map, um, I think that a lot of people come back and they use the birding map uh, and they're exploring areas all around the Columbia Basin. Uh, the map is designed to give a self-guided tour and it tells people what species they can expect to see at what sites. Um, so, and, and this thing is going like hotcakes. We need money to produce a second edition. A festival like the Sand Hill Crane Festival is good for a community. Number one, it gives you recognition. Number two, it's good for our economy. Uh, tourism dollars are, to a city, the best dollars you can get because there's no expense side to them. Um, and it identifies our city as a place, a destination to come to. In other words, the elastic effect. People come here for the Sand Hill Crane Festival. They go home, they come back because of the bass fishing. They come back because of the hunting. They come back to see the culture. Uh, of our community. Uh, once they recognize that what's here, they always come back. And our hope is that some of them will either relocate a business here or, or buy a home here. Here's where to see some of Washington's wildlife in the coming weeks. Employees at the agency's Olympia headquarters volunteered to sort through all the garbage produced in the building in one day to see how we're doing to conserve our resources and energy. While there was increased recycling of glass, batteries, and other techno trash, 
we learned there is a need for improvement. Today, the sustainability team and wonderful DFW staff volunteers helped sort out an accumulation of one day's worth of waste from the Natural Resources Building, which has six floors worth of waste and several agencies that provide this waste. And part one of our goals is to essentially monitor the impact that we have on our waste usage. Uh, we also monitor energy use, water use, and paper usage. And it's important that we, the waste impact, last year we found out that 60% of our waste could have been reduced, reused, or recycled. So we're doing the second year to make sure essentially that we are able to track year after year if we're reducing our impact or increasing our impact. find out later how we did and we will determine if we've actually lessened our impact and we also are monitoring because other agencies like the Department of Natural Resources, Department of Agriculture are also contributing in the natural resource building waste accumulation so what we're trying to do is monitor also what DFW is doing and, and so we're comparing the different agencies by the different floors and what's exciting is being able to get staff engaged, to get them excited about understanding what kind of waste that we're accumulating so that they understand their own impacts, their daily impacts, and what, and what they can do to make a difference. The Department of Fish and Wildlife stands for long-term sustainability. And that is really, when you get to the core message, that is, that's conserving the resources for future generations. I think oftentimes we don't think in generations in, in the future, but most of our employees have small kids, and we want them to be able to enjoy the same quality of life and the natural resources that were abundant when we were growing up. Now, with the population going up in the state, um, we just have to be much smarter about how we use our resources. Department of Fish and Wildlife, a lot of times we think of conservation as being an outdoor sport, but really it's an indoor sport as well. When you look at the things that we use in our homes every day, I think a lot of times we just don't take the time to think about where they came from and at what cost uh, to future generations. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching. Why am I hungry? Hey, <laughs> perfectly good hot pocket. Hey, it's mine. Frank has his privileges. I'll split it with you. Okay. <laughs>